Good morning. Whoo, what a beautiful day outside, isn't it? What a great day to come together in the name of the Lord to get to celebrate what he's done in our lives all week long. You know, we can take it for granted sometimes and we just, I have to stop and take a breath sometimes to just remember how good the Lord's been to me. You know, we, we, in, in Sunday school this morning, we were talking and kind of laughing about one of the things I love about this church is that, that everybody is welcome. And I just, I just love that. And I, I realized when we were saying that, wow, if they weren't, I couldn't be here because I was probably the worst of the worst when we, when we started all of this. And it's so exciting to be part of a church family that comes together to celebrate what the Lord does. Hey, as we, as we get started this morning, I, I want to encourage you. Can I encourage you in one little thing that's just really, really fallen on me? Um, you know, I, I lost a lifelong dear friend this year, Miss Jerry's nephew, Kelly Wayne. And uh, something that happens with me, usually when I lose somebody that's close to me like that, it doesn't just kind of like go away from me, that over time, I was like, Lord, Lord, what did I miss? What is it that I want to grow out of this? And, and this is kind of that, that, I would say it's a form of a regret uh, in that, that I don't live each day within the day, like the Word tells me to do. And I look back like with, with Kelly Wayne, and we would visit, but gosh, if I'd have just slowed down and gone every day. If I'd have just slowed down and spent a little more time. If I, but we get so busy. We get so wrapped up. And what, I, what, I, what it's done for me is I am practicing living in the day. You know, the word tells us, let tomorrow worry about tomorrow. That let's live in the day. And so, right so right now. So, so in Sunday schools, we talked about it. Some of the things that came out was this, and which I thought was very profound, that in that busyness of worrying about tomorrow, we can miss what the Lord has for us today. That we can just absolutely miss it. That I want to encourage you, and let's live each day for the day. I mean, let's live it to its fullest. Let's, let's ask the Lord what he has for us each day, and let's walk it out, and quit taking on the burdens. Because for me... I don't just take on the burden for tomorrow. Literally, if you could come to my house and hear some of our conversations, I've got the burdens of 15 years from now, what this is going to look like, and 12 years from now, and 8 years from now. So it's even worse than just tomorrow. And I look around the room. I know most of you pretty good. I think you're right there with me, that I'm not just thinking about tomorrow. I'm thinking about years down the road. That I want to encourage you to let's practice living in the day and stopping and listening for the Lord. Yeah. Stopping and waiting on the Lord. Yeah. And just slow down. And don't have to be busy all the time. Yeah. 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 That we can just stop and sit with the Lord. We can live each day in this fullness that the Lord has for us. So that we honor Him. That we serve Him in everything that we do. So if you can join me in that, I'm going to try to practice that better. I'm going to start today trying to practice that better. <clears throat> I'm going to make an effort at it because the effort I've made for all these years has been busy, has been go. And you know what else it's been? Take care of me. I don't want it to be take care of me. I want it to be take care of you. I want it to be take care of the kingdom. I want it to be serving what he's called me to serve. Yeah. And I let the busyness steal all of that from me. Can we, can we practice in that? I hope that makes the sense coming out of here as it does in my mind. For me, it's very simple. That I need to live, I need to live within the day. <clears throat> and I want to encourage each and every. Can we do that? We can do, did I welcome you? I don't even remember. I was so anxious to tell that that I don't even remember. That I want us to do that, but I do want to welcome you. If you're visiting, our restrooms are out in the hallway and to the right. By the way, you're not a visitor, but welcome home. You good? All right. Uh, restrooms out in the hallway to the right. Remember, this is a cry room in the corner for nursing infants with their mother only. That's what that room is for. Other than that, I want us to celebrate. I want us to enjoy. To enjoy one another, I want you to enjoy the joy of the Lord. I want you to be in your fullness, the fullness that God has for you this day. Yeah. This day. Let's don't worry about work tomorrow or Friday. <laughs> 
or next year. Let's worry about this day and let's enjoy one another. And you know that extends into your homes. Those of you who have spouses and family at home. Let's enjoy one another. Let's enjoy the love that God has for each and every one of us. And while we're at it, let's pray up Pastor Jeff. <laughs> he was asked to come down and speak at Paulina. And we're excited for him to go and excited for the message he's got. So if you would, join me in prayer. Praise team, I would ask that you come on up so you can bring us in. So join me in prayer. Father God, whoo, we just thank you, Lord, for you. We thank you for your love. We thank you that you chose us, O oh Lord. Father, we realize that we fall short so often, and we thank you that you would strengthen us to be more like you, Lord, that you would strengthen us to follow your word, uh, Father God, that you would strengthen us to know your word, Lord God, that we would honor you in all that we do, Father. We invite you into this house, Lord God. You told us in your word that when two or more together, you two would be there, and we stand in faith that you're here with us, O Lord. And we open up our hearts and our arms and say, have your way, Lord. Have your way in this place, Lord, as we celebrate you. In Jesus' name, amen. As the praise team's coming together, I want to encourage you. Come into praise and worship. You know, our life is supposed to be praise and worship. Everything that we do. But when we come together in this time, please don't let it be like, Oh, we come and we sing three songs and we do this and we do that. Disconnect from this world. Get in alignment with the heavenly realms. Use this music to bring, to bring yourself in. Relax. If something distracts you, turn the other way or move to another location. It's okay to raise our hands. It's okay to dance. It's okay to sit still. It's okay to do whatever. But do it with the Lord through this time. Don't let it just be church in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand as they get going.
stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work it. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working.
every time There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up There was no way that he couldn't. There was no way that he couldn't see it through to the end. That he loves you. He loves you. I said us. He loves you. Individually. He loves you so well. He knows you so well that the very hairs on your head are numbered. He knows you down that intimately. And he loves you that much. That at any given time, all we have to do is open up and say, I want it all. So as we prepare to come to communion today, what I want to encourage you to do is to be in a position to come up, a position of transparency, to just simply stand before the Lord and say, I take this cup, Lord, that you prepared for me. He prepared this cup. He prepared this body that he offers us today. That I come up and I take it, Lord, because I want to be inside this covenant with you that I enter in with you, Lord. And you know what? Yes, I want it all. I want to be all in. I want all of you, Lord. Less of me, Lord, as we move forward. So if you're supposed to serve, come up. If you're not, it's perfectly fine. We'll walk right over here and we'll serve ourselves on the side. We trust that the Lord knows what we need for each and every day. Join me in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much. We thank you for this this emblem that you've give us, given us, that you told us to remember you, Lord God. Lord, 
not only do we not want to, not only do we always want to remember you, we want to be in a position that we never forget what you've done for us, O Lord. Help us, Father God, to, to clear our hearts of, any, of anything that would interfere, Lord, that we would come to you with transparency, with open, loving hearts, Lord. And we do say, Lord, we partake of your cup, O Lord, and we thank you that you would offer it to us, Lord. Have your way in each of us. Father God, we thank you so much. Who we thank you for your teaching about tithes and offerings, Lord God. We thank you that your provision is always enough, Lord God. Father, if our hearts aren't right about tithing and offering and giving, Lord, we ask that through the fullness of your spirit, you would help to make our hearts right, that we would truly understand the kingdom principle of giving, Lord God. Thank you, Father, that you would multiply this tithe and this offering, Lord, as we present it to you, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You can bring your tithe and offering up front, uh, uh, and we'll release the kingdom kids to go. Settle in, lock your seatbelts, nobody can leave till I finish. You know, the Lord, is, the Lord is so good about always providing a message, and, and I think I tell you this almost every time, he's messed me up this time for where we're starting and where we're going, and I'm not real sure. He's given me everything we need, I'm just not sure how it's going to come together, but I'm going to celebrate it, and, and, and whatever he has for us is what I'm going to celebrate today. We've kind of laughed, you know, I'm, I'm loving the season. I think some of you know I was down last week. I was kind of sick, and I'm recovering very quick. And uh, I laughed this week. Jeff said, so you know we're praying that you're strong enough to preach Sunday, right? Because I've got to go somewhere. I said, absolutely. We're strong enough, and we're ready to go. I was laughing in Sunday school this morning. I told him, I said, man, you'd have thought I lost a little weight while I was down, and I thought I did until I zipped this vest this morning and realized I didn't lose anything while I was laid up, but I'm trying. So these threads are screaming, but it's hanging in there. Isn't that right? So God is so good. Guys, it's it's so much fun to be here. And I so celebrate with Pat and Chad that Chad goes down there. And and listen, when the Lord puts you in a position to speak, it's not as easy as you might think, but it's joyful. Does that that make sense? So, you know, you... so all week I felt so bad I would get up and do my reading and, and I kind of knew what the Lord wanted me to speak on and, but I would struggle with organizing it. It's like I just couldn't, I just couldn't get that to. And it's so funny because he'll let me reach the point where it's almost like, please God, please God, show me what the message is. So today is a little different but it's exciting for me. If you remember last week, so I wasn't here but I watched and I remember Jeff distinctly talking about that we want to be careful not to live within the walls of religion. That we want to be careful that we aren't rule-based. We're in the freedom of Christ Jesus that he offered us. And in the base of love is where we are. That everything we do in the kingdom is for the love of Christ. It's through the love of Christ that everything I do, that it won't, I want it to fall under that. And I think today is about that because we're going to start off talking about the New Jerusalem. And the reason I make that declaration is we're not talking about where Jeff was saying that we don't want to be in the city within the walls of religion. We're talking about the New Jerusalem today, which are the walls that we want to be within. Okay? That we know that the bride of Christ, according to the word, that the bride of Christ was presented and it was the New Jerusalem coming down to the earth so that God could dwell with us. We could dwell, he could dwell amongst us again. And so that's why I'm kind of shocked that I'm opening up today in Revelation. Because let me just be honest. It scares me a little bit. Okay? I, I, I love reading Revelation. But I am not going to get up here and declare to you that I understand it all. Because I do not. Some of it I read and I get. And then I just say, okay, Lord, I just trust you that you'll teach me what I need to know at this point. But would you join me? We're going to go to Revelation 22. Very end of the Bible. Of our Bible. That uh, we're going to go to. And and I'm going to do some reading from there. And a little bit of. Just a little bit of conversation about it. as, As we move forward in this. Okay. Then the angel showed me the river. 
of the water of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. They will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun for the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. The angel said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel to show his servants the things that must take place. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy in this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and had seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers, <clears throat> and the, the, with your brothers, the prophets, and all who keep the words of this book, worship God. Then he told me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, because the time is near. Let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let him who is vile continue to be vile. Let him who does right continue to do right. And let him who is holy continue to be holy. Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. <clears throat> Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let him who hears say, come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come, and whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. The tree of life. You know, if we go back, so we're at the last, the very end of our Bible. If we go to the very beginning in Genesis, we'll read again there about this tree of life. There's this tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the two trees are totally different. So, bear with me one second. So, in, in, in our walk with God... In our walking in the kingdom, we have to decide at some point if we want to stand at the tree of life. Standing at the tree of life looks like that no matter what's going on in my life, my eyes are on Christ. That I stand in life and what he has for me. Eternal life that he promised me. Standing at the tree of knowledge of good and evil says, I need to figure this out. I want to know what's good and what's not. And I have to believe that somewhere in that Christ would say, why do you need to know what's good or not? Focus on me and I'll take care of that. Don't focus on this. If you remember, with Adam and Eve, that's where they fell short. And they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And when they told the Lord that they were naked, the Lord said, Who told you you were naked? There was no need for them to even know that. That he had them in the palm of his hand. And he would give them what they needed and what they knew. So when we stand at the tree of knowledge of good and evil, it creates in us a judgment of others. So let's see if we can kind of lay this out a little bit. All right? So if I'm standing here and I've been 
brought forth to be in front of each and every one of you. That I've been called out, much like when Jesus was standing there. Remember that he caught the woman in adultery and he calls them and they were going to stone her. And Jesus steps up and says, hey, let any of you who is without sin cast the first stone. So if I'm standing up here and have been brought before you, and I'm standing up here as a thief that I've stolen from amongst you, and I stand up front as this thief, and you stand at the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you're calling me out. Why? Because you know what being a thief is. Because you focused on what being a thief is. And you're going to call me out and punish him and make him pay that he's no good. But if you stand then at the tree of life, you're going to love me. So let's go through a couple of them. Because some of them kind of rattle the church. So let's go through the sexually immoral. So if I'm standing here and I've been called out as an adulterer or as a homosexual or as a, a pervert or wh whatever the list may be, at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you're going to be wanting to cast that stone. And Jesus is going to say, those of you without sin cast the first stone. Whereas if I stand at the tree of life and I look, I'm going to love. And you know what I'm going to realize? Oh, that could have been me. I'm going to love. I'm going to love because at the tree of life, life is offered. At the tree of knowledge of good and evil, condemnation is offered. Judgment is offered. Ugliness is offered. And you know what usually stirs it the most? When it's something that's stirred in us. You know, I find somebody who doesn't trust anybody. Maybe doesn't need to be trusted. Because there's something in them. I find that somebody who believes that, that every person is messing around. is maybe somebody who struggles with. Maybe not doing it, but trying not to do it. You, you know what I'm saying? I find a liar, somebody who believes that everything words come out of your mouth is a lie, mm, pretty much they have some lying tendencies. And that may be a little harsh, but that's from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because Christ Jesus, who is the tree of life, placed a thief in charge of the treasury. He loved him. He loved him. Standing at the tree of life. There is no judgment. Let's see what some of the other notes were <laughs> on that. A murderer. You know what we've left out of this? So if I stand here as a murderer, and you could say, well, I look around the room, I don't see any great murderers. You could throw the first stone. Well, wait a minute. Didn't Christ Jesus say if you had anger towards someone? How well you pass that one. That's from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If I'm standing there and pointing and going to call them out. Because I can tell you, there's a good chance by the time I drive in traffic back to my house four and a half miles from here, that I'll be a murderer. Are you getting me? So I need to be real careful about whether I'm the one that can cast that first stone because I'm standing at the wrong tree. Because at the tree of life, I want to love. I want them to have everything that Christ has for them. And what they did doesn't matter. Let's talk about the hard one. I stand here as a gossiper. Who wants to cast the first stone? I surely can't cast it. Because, you know, I can be that guy and say, Well, yeah, old boy's doing good, but I remember when... I can go into prayer with somebody. I remember standing in a teaching, and I wish I could think of which pastor, and it could have been Mike Melee. Tammy could probably remember it, saying, 
Intercessory prayer can be so dangerous because you start out meaning good. And before you know it, you're spilling all of somebody's beans and it's become a gossip session in the name of Jesus. Whew, that hurt. In the name of Jesus. That we can get into a conversation. And you know what falls under that is even that things of the past shouldn't even be spoken of. Isn't that what the word says? I'm not saying exactly, but I'm very, very close. That it's basically un unholy to even speak of the things that used to happen in darkness. But boy, we can light them on fire, can't we? So when I stand up here as a gossip, who's going to cast the first stone? Those that stand at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because those that stand at the tree of life are going to go, oh my God, it could be me, Lord. Bring them in, Lord. <laughs> Love them, Lord. Help them, Lord. Because it's as though, who said it? It's as though it never were. He blessed us with it as though it never were. It's why it's so important that no matter what's going on in our lives, that we stand at the tree of life with our eyes on Christ Jesus. That we allow him to fight our battles. Because if we lean in to what's right and what's wrong and what's good and what's bad, we become judgmental of every person that we see. But we don't want anybody to be judgmental of us. Think about that. Think about that in most churches, that may be unfair, in some churches, the walk down this center aisle to come up to the altar for salvation has been created or destined to be a walk of shame rather than a walk of glory. It's a walk of glory. Because they're headed to the tree of life. That they're going to stand at the tree of life. And nothing that happens matters. Nothing that has happened in the past matters. That we're now at the tree of life. That it's a, a day of celebration. Rather than a day of leaning over and going, Oh, I can't believe old Chippy's up in here. Let's see where this is going to go. I bet they don't know he did this. Right? We've done it, folks. <laughs> We've thought it. It hurts me because sometimes I still think it about myself. What am I doing up in here? I'm standing at the wrong tree when I think that. Child of God. 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 We're at the tree of life. We don't need the tree of knowledge and good and evil because we stand at the tree of life. And this passage tells us that there's two of them, one on each side of the streams of living waters. We are streams of living waters. I want to stand between those two trees of life. I want to be surrounded by the tree of life. I want to walk out the tree of life with zero judgment for anybody because it could have been me. All it takes is one bad decision and it could have been me. Whatever that decision could be. One decision that we've got to get that the tree of life is made available to us. And then if we drift away from it and go to the tree of knowledge of good and evil, we become judgmental of others. Usually, usually to hide our own sin. Isn't that kind of the nature of humans? We'll call out all your problems to hide my problems. I surely have had some old buddies in the past, <clears throat> some of our groups that would burn you every way they could to protect them, to cover what they were doing. Of course, I usually help burn my own self, but... There were those that would help burn you to do that. That's because of that tree of knowledge of good and evil. I don't need to discern. I don't need to know what's good and evil. I need to know the righteousness and holiness of God. I need to know that he made me righteous. He made me righteous. We got, we got to get that. <laughs> that you are the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Because of him. Knowledge of good and evil doesn't affect me. How good or bad somebody is that walks through that door does not matter to me. I'm excited that they walk through that door and they're looking for the kingdom of God. That they're looking for a chance 
to be at the tree of life, whether they know it or not. Whether, you know, we have those that just show up and say, I don't even know how I ended up here. I'm just here. Him too. I just want you, I want to get you to the, to the root of the tree of life. I want to get you into the streams of living water. That the true, the tree of life's roots go down into that stream. And that we carry those living waters. I, I want you to hear me about this because it upsets me so bad. That as we walk in the kingdom, if we're quick to be judgmental of others. Because we've all got our own things. And when you go through these things, like I just pulled up those few of of uh, a thief or sexually immoral or a murder or a gossip. But that list goes on and on and on and on. And we all know that. And only you, only you know what's hidden within. And you know where we want to get that? To the tree of life. Because it's covered too. But I've got to be willing to expose it. Lord, I want to give you this also. You know, especially early in my walk, periodically now, but especially early in my walk, the way the devil would come after me was remind me of those things that I haven't talked to the Lord about. And the Holy Spirit, thankful for people like Jerry Clouch that we talked about earlier, would show me, and I'd literally stop right then. And that too, Lord. Oh, yeah, Father, I forgot to discuss that with you and that too. You know why? There's no shame. And he knew already. I just needed to present it to him. So I stand at the tree of life, Lord, and that too, Father. And that too, Lord. Whatever that too is. Because he's told us there is nothing too great that it can't be the, and that too, Father. I forgot to tell you about that. And it breaks that hold. The only hold the devil's got is sin. And the Lord paid that debt. Let's look at Jeremiah 17. 7 and 8. I'm going to go off of y'all guys instead of digging through my Bible because I can't flip to it quite as good as Jeff can. I have to kind of work at it. So, But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. It leaves. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. That's you. That is you. That's me. That's us. That's where we can stand at that stream with our, with our roots down in it. With my eyes focused on the Lord. That no matter what the circumstances are, I can always have joy. I can have green leaves that we can always bear fruit. We can always bear fruit is what the word is telling us. It's the reminder of where we need to be and where our focus needs to be. We've got to quit focusing on the things of this world and scaling people and things by the things we've been taught about this world and do it within the love of Christ Jesus. I, I want to serve the Lord out of love, not out of fear of retribution, not out of fear of hell, not out of fear of, of the rules of the church. I want to do it out of my love for Christ Jesus. And that's what he asked us to do. For those who, who love me will obey my teachings. Isn't that what he said? I want to obey his teachings out of love. I want to be more like him. I want to honor him. He is my namesake. I am his namesake. Hallelujah. I want to honor him in everything that I do. And the way that I do that is by being focused on the tree of life. My eyes focused on Christ Jesus. I'm going to say it till we're through, so you might as well get it. you still got a few more minutes with me, and I'm going to repeat it over and over. That I want us to get this. And you know who's probably receiving the most is me. Because usually when the Lord gives us these things, I need it more than anybody in here. That I want to be focused on the Lord. No matter what my life looks like. And I don't ever, ever want to hold you to a standard that I don't want to be held to. That's why the standard of love is the place to be. Because <clears throat> there's no scale. It's love. It's love. It's not, oh, there's a little bit of bad. 
Oh, but there's a little good. No. Knowledge of good and evil. I want to stand in love. And when I look at you, I want to see good. No matter what your life looks like. When you look at me, I want you to see good. No matter what my life looks like. And that good is Christ Jesus. That good is his righteousness. That good is his holiness. Because without him, I've seen me. Some of y'all haven't seen me without him. I've seen me without him. And it's not good. And it's not righteousness. And it's not holiness. And that's why I have no need for the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I have need for the tree of life where I want to stand always with my eyes focused on Christ. Let's look at 2 Peter 1. We're just going to read 3 and 4. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. He's reminding us that we do not have to give in to evil desires. He's fixed it that we can escape those things. How do we do that? By being focused on Christ Jesus. It's really easy. So I would kind of tell you, if your walk with Christ is real difficult, maybe, maybe I kind of got one foot still at the other tree. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, because when I stand at the tree of life with him, it's easy. It doesn't mean things aren't going to happen, but my walk with him is easy. Because he's put me in a position that these evil desires have no hold on me. He paid the debt for them. Oh, death, where is your sting? He paid the debt for those evil desires. That sin had no more hold on any of us. It's why we stand with our eyes on Christ. Not perfect, not perfect, still a work in progress, still putting one foot in front of the other each and every day. After today, trying to remind myself to live one day at a time in its fullest and to honor Christ in whatever that is and to walk in the love that he has for me. <clears throat> I can't speak ever in front of anybody without the truth of the basic, the basic truth of the gospel to me, which is John 3.18. Which, is, which just blesses me over and over. And it says, Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. <clears throat> Very simply put, when we believe and we truly believe, and only you know if you truly believe in your heart, there is no judgment. Why? The tree of life. The tree of knowledge of good and evil no longer has any hold, any bearing, anything for us that I stand at the tree of life with Christ Jesus, with my eyes focused on my Redeemer, and there is no judgment. He said, it is as though it never were. You see, we complicate it as the church, that there's a dozen steps and the earth and the stars and the moon have to all line up and everything's got to be just right. And he says, and I think it's actually in one of the passages that I'm going to read here in just a minute, just come. Just come. You know, I'm one of those guys that tried to clean my life up before I was going to go back to church. It didn't work. I tried everything. It didn't work. And then one night, long before Pastor Jeff was a pastor, sitting in a room... I kind of made a statement to the room of men that this is happening in my life and I'm not moving until the Lord shows me what to do. And I remember Pastor Jeff getting up and coming across the room. And y'all remember I had my head down thinking, oh my God, they're coming to pray over me. That had never happened at that point. And I was freaking out. Oh my God, they're coming to pray over me. And they came over and they prayed over me. Jeff prayed over me. After church that night, we laughed, had a good time. 
went home, went to bed. The next morning when I woke up, my wife sat up and looked at me and said, this is literally what she said now. What? First words out of her mouth. What? I don't know. <laughs> she said, what? And I said, I'm not the same man that went to bed in this bed last night. She said, what does that mean? And I said, I have no idea. We've got to see what the day looks like. That because of the love of our Savior and a willingness just to say, I'm not moving, Lord, until you show me what to do, it opened my heart enough to let him in. And I had some men there. Pastor Jeff being the one that first got to me and got his hands on me. Like I said, years before he was a pastor. <laughs> had no idea what was going to come out of it. I was able to shift into the kingdom and to understand that. For those who believe, there is no judgment. That's available to every one of us. But one of the things I've grown to realize is I've got to own it. I've got to own it. I've got to own it. I've got to believe it. I've got to own it. I've got to walk it. I've got to be willing to take some risk and walk it. And you know what? I've got to be willing to step out periodically and talk about it. I've got to be willing to say, yes, I'm a believer. And you know what? <clears throat> I'm really one of those believers. You know those crazy ones. Those who will actually raise their hands a little bit. And those that will actually dance a little bit. And those that will actually declare the favor of the Lord. You know why? Because we're blessed and we're highly favored. If you don't believe it, look around. That we declare the favor of the Lord in everything we do. <clears throat> when I can't find a <clears throat> excuse me, when I can't find a tool, and I look and look and I go walk off and come back and it's laying on top, I declare the favor of the Lord because He put it where I could find it. Amen. When I can't get the answer to something, and I go take a two-minute break and the answer just comes, I declare the favor of the Lord. But I have to own it. I have to own it. I have to be willing to own it. He doesn't say that. It's something I realized. That I want to represent him in everything. Am I great at that? Not necessarily. Do I try? Mm-hmm. Could I try harder? Mm-hmm. Could I do better? Yes. And I mean to do better. But I got a flesh I trained for a whole lot of years that I had to keep kicked down and squashed down and back in check. But I'll tell you this, I'm not picking that flesh back up. If that flesh is going to show itself, it's going to have to kick and scratch and claw and raise itself up. Because I'm going to keep it down under my feet. And I'm going to stand in this, that for those who believe there is no judgment. That even at my worst moment, I'm still just as saved as I was that night that they prayed over me and I received the Spirit. I want you to get that, that we've got to own it, that we've got to own it, that we've got to be willing to own it. Let's look at Romans 8, 1 through 4. I think Jeff read this the other day because I remember it really exciting me because it's like, oh, my God, it's one of the things I want to do. So in Romans 1, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemns sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the spirit. How do I live? Do I live according to the flesh? Or do I live according to the spirit? I always like to use the, the old litmus paper test. There's my litmus paper test. I look at my life. I don't look at Chad's life. I don't look at Elena's life. I don't look at Marie's life. I don't look at Daniel's life. I look at my life. Amen. And I say, how am I living Am I living in accordance with the flesh or with the spirit? And you know what? Some days it's this way. 
Some days it's this way. But my goal is that it's always by the Spirit. That when I realize I'm living by the flesh, that I check myself immediately. And how do I do that? Paul says, you have the truth of the word. You have your thoughts line up with the truth of the word. And that brings me right back in alignment with the Spirit. That I want to follow the truth of the Spirit. That I want to live my life in accordance with the Spirit, not of the flesh. Because you see, the world has taught us about the flesh, about this feel good, and you deserve, and oh, you need to. And boy, look, I can fall right into that. I like to have a good time. I like to cut up. I like to travel. I like to do this. I like to do that. I can fall right in line. But then I have to remember, okay, if I'm having a good time, am I honoring the spirit or am I honoring the flesh? Because, you know, one of the tricks for me, one of the understandings for me was that as a Christian, I could still have a good time. It just looks different. It's different than a fleshly good time. That there is joy in the Lord. And it is my strength. That I'm willing to step out and look a little different because of it. I don't want to look like the world. I want to look like a believer. I want to look like a follower of the way. A follower of Christ Jesus. I, I, I want to I position myself each and every moment of every day to be more in line with the truth of the word of God. I'm not always successful, but I'm steadily gaining that way. I'm steadily gaining that way. And when I get out of line, I want to get back in this word so that I follow the spirit and not the flesh. That no, my flesh doesn't need to feel good. My flesh needs to feel the love of Christ, and that's all I need. Even when I'm alone. But you know, I'm one of those guys, when I'm alone, my whole mind just goes places I don't want it to go. An old depression will try to slip in on me. And I'll think, oh, here you are all alone. And then I realize, wait a minute. I'm not alone unless the Lord needed me alone. Because I submit to him in everything. And you know what? These thought processes, Lord, if they aren't of you, take them away from me. And help me to line them up with the truth of your word. So that even in my alone time, I'm strengthened. I want to be more like you in all that I do. Because he paid the price that darkness has no hold on my life. If it gets into my life, I've invited it in. I can lie any way I want. I can make up excuses. The bottom line is, if it gets in, I open the door for it to get in. And if I'll be honest, and I'll stop and look, I'll know when I did it. I'll know when I open the door. And I have responsibility in that. That's not usually the teaching. You know, usually the teaching is much more simple than that. But I have some responsibility. And my responsibility is I'm not going to open the door to darkness in my life. I want to open the door to the tree of life and light. I want my eyes on Christ Jesus so I'm not distracted by the things of this world. It doesn't mean that I can't go and do and have and enjoy. It means that going and doing and having and enjoying looks different. Does that make sense? Y'all got quiet. I'm getting those looks. That you, got, you got things to do. Let's look at Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with the perseverance, the race marked out, with perseverance, the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So we're reminded again that he paid the price. That sin has no room in our lives. That it can only come in if we invite it in. And even when it comes, the Lord still loves me. I just have some adjusting to do. And what is that? To get my eyes back on Christ. To turn my heart back to the Lord. And away from the interferences. It might be as simple as busyness. 
You know, the, this, this sin list is so confusing to us. But let's just be honest about what sin really is. Condition of the heart. It can be something men is good. And if I have the wrong condition of my heart, it can be counted as sin. That I have responsibility in this. That I want to walk with Christ Jesus. That I want to stand under him in everything. That I want to let him fight my battle on every side. That when I take it up, when I take that battle up, what tree am I at? When I get a little offended by somebody, what tree am I at? The tree of knowledge of good and evil because all of a sudden I'm so important that it's offending me and I need to go do something about it. That's not the tree of life. That's the tree of life. It's, Lord, I trust you to fight my battle on every side. It goes back, I think we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. I know we did in Sunday school one day. <clears throat> when our church was just forming, some people came against our pastor. And our pastorette, Pastor Tammy, had gotten a word from the Lord. And she said, are you going to spend the rest of your life defending and fighting and swimming upstream, fighting these battles of people coming against you, or are you going to let God take care of your battles? And his answer was, you're right. It's not my battle to fight. That's the same in every situation that we need to let God fight our battles. We need to let God stand in on our behalf. That my eyes need to be on him and I need to be willing to extend love on his behalf. Greg, could y'all come back up, please? I'm going to ask the praise team to come up and to play. And this is what I want to ask you to do. This is not the exit song, by the way. <laughs> All right? This is an opportunity... <laughs> This is an opportunity to come up here and to just simply have a conversation with God. You know if something we talked about today is in your life. You know if there's something in your life that you need to hold a conversation with Him about. For me, it is, oh yeah, that too, Lord. Or you know, sometimes it's not even the that too. Sometimes it's that I've just gone back and picked something back up that I didn't mean to. And I want to stand in a position that I keep my flesh down. And that I live in the yeah. spirit with him and all that he has for me. So as they get going, I want to encourage you to come to the altar. Not to me. Come to the altar. And spend a few minutes with God. And just hold a conversation with him. If you just need that encouragement from him, come and let God encourage you. Let Christ Jesus encourage you to be strong in whatever it is that you have going on in your life. And listen, let's don't lie to ourselves. We've all got something going on. Okay, we've all got that something that usually we're a little quiet about, maybe a little ashamed of. Or if you're like me, if, if I'm in some kind of offense, what I like to do is just blah, 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 blah about it. Why? Because I want misery to and com have company. You know what I mean? I want you to know what a victim I am. We're not victims, we're victors. I don't care what the situation is. You're not a victor, you're a victor because of Christ Jesus and what he did for you on that cross. Because there is no judgment for you that believe. That he wants you to honor his teachings in love, not in fear. That I want to honor him as my namesake in everything that I do. Father God, I just ask that your spirit would move in this place. And that you would encourage each and every one of us to come forth for just a few minutes, Father sit at your feet, O oh Lord, that we could be in a posture of, in that too, Father God, in Jesus' name, amen.
Father God, we thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you that your spirit, Lord God, is alive in each and every one of us. We thank you, Lord, that you made us righteous and you made us holy. Yes. Strengthen us, Lord God, this day to own it and to go forth in your name. Yes. We thank you, Father, that you would be here with us, Lord, and we celebrate you in our lives, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, I want to encourage you to go forth in the name of the Lord. Go forth and celebrate. Be joyful. Let the glory of the Lord show through you in all that you do.